All right, everyone, just because I'm feeling it right now, let's say some prayer real quick before we dive right into the word. If you would all would, bow your heads, close your eyes. God, thank you for, once again, bringing all these students here today to endure some in community, just spend time with one another. I just pray that whatever's going on in their lives, may you just help guide them and just teach them your ways, Lord. Just teach them that your loving grace is, is enough for, for them. Just let them know, remind them that each and every day, they're the ones that can make a difference in this world, no matter how old they are or what they do in life. Because they are enough, they are qualified to do your kingdom work, God. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, everyone. As you all know, this is my first Sunday speaking, like first Sunday morning. It's kind of it's kind of weird, not going to lie. I got up this morning and I was like, all right, I got to at least look somewhat decent. I can't just wear a shirt and then just show up. I mean, I did wear a shirt and show up, but hey, I got, I got some new vans, not just for this occasion, but uh, my buddy said it looks like clown shoes. I don't know. He's trying to roast me. Oh, thank you. All right, guys. Last week, Evan kicked off this, what it says right here, adulting is difficult, adulting. And Evan kicked that off with this, the topic of dating. Now, relationships is so key. I think it's key for everyone's lives. I think it's so important. I think as you reach adulthood, you really need to show a lot of care for one another. Now, care is a word that is just real simple. It may sound simple, but it means it has a lot of value to it. And this morning, I want to kick things off with just saying this. Not everything is about you. The world doesn't revolve around you only. There's like, I don't know, 7 billion people on this planet. Not everything's about you. There are other people in different communities that need, they need someone like you in their lives. They need a strong person in their life like you. Caring about other people teaches you what it means to be a good adult, but also being a strong, a strong Christian woman or man. Caring about others is valuable. I think it teaches us a lot of lessons. And one of the first lessons I think it teaches us is simply serving. That is just, it's very, it's very simple as that. Serving is one of the lessons that we learn about in life when we think about caring about others. Now, serving isn't just like, here's what I think what a lot of people think about serving. They think, oh, I gotta go to China, become a missionary, learn Chinese, teach people the word. Like, no, it, that sounds great and all, but serving can be as simple as, like this guy right here, he's new. I just met him, and his name's Charlie. It can be as simple as getting to know someone and doing life with them. That's how simple it can be. But the problem is, there's some issues to it. You see that we are uncomfortable. Serving is uncomfortable. I don't care who you are or where you come from, at some level, serving is uncomfortable. How many of you have been on like a mission trip? Raise your hand. Yeah, some of you have been on a mission trip. Can you all agree that at some level it is, and it is uncomfortable, right? It is. Because getting to know people is a little bit uncomfortable, especially when you don't know them. But also another issue we have out of it is what will I gain out of it? Guys, I don't think that should be like even a question. Like what, you, what will you gain out of serving one, one other person or a community? Because as we read in Mark chapter 10, we're going to read a little passage on it. It's about Jesus predicting his death a third time. And now we're going to read a lot of scripture, so bear with me. We'll start off in verse 33, chapter 10, and it reads this. We are going up to Jerusalem, Jesus said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him, and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. They replied, 
let one of us sit at your right, let us sit, let us one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or my, or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the 10 heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rules of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you instead. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to, to be first must be slave of all. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That was a lot of scripture, I understand. But to sum it up, Jesus really humbled his disciples. He humbled them and said, be humble and serve. I believe that's a slide up there. I want you to put that up. Be humble and serve. Guys, service is the greatest honor one can do for God and one can receive. It's not about like what you get out of it. It's about the, the works of the Lord you're, go, you're giving to his people. You can get a lot of things out of service. You get to develop new friendships. You get to learn about a new community, learn about a new community. Like for example, we took these high schoolers to where I'm from, Chin Lane. None of them have been there. They went out there and I will tell you what, they were shocked and amazed, but they also had a really good time because they learned a new culture and they met new people. But also most importantly, they made these relationships they once had and screwed them strong, grew them stronger. And relationships is so important when caring for others because on the second lesson, the second lesson you learn out of it for caring about others is who is with you or who is not with you. Who's gonna be there for you? Who's gonna accept you for who you are? And who's gonna be with you through thick and thin? I know for me, I have some, my best friends, I have three of them. I've known them since junior high. And I was, I was looking at a video last night uh, that was when we were 16 years old. We used to make these little skits and then post them on like Snapchat or something. Over like a couple weeks ago, like three weeks ago, I went on a Flagstaff trip with my friends. We got an Airbnb and uh, you can start showing the first photo. You can show the first photo. We went to Flagstaff, yeah. <laughs> All right, this is my friend and I. We were at the Grand Canyon. Uh, he's obviously, he's not very excited about the picture we took, but I think it just describes our friendship. And you can show the next one. Yeah, that's all of us. That is the four of us. We we're all grown up. We're about to turn 21 this year, and it's about to be amazing. You can show the next one. Uh, yeah, my friend and I are trying to take a cute bromance photo, but obviously we just kept laughing, and we couldn't really do it. And you can show the next one. And yeah, you can see I took a photo of my friend sleeping on the car ride. <laughs> he has a lot of pimples. I didn't realize that. You can go to the next one. And yeah, that's all of us. We're in the Airbnb. We got an Airbnb. That's pretty sick. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's us in the Airbnb. And uh, that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you can take that off. Actually, like, keep that photo up where we're in the Airbnb. Just because I'm going to talk about my friends for one minute. The trip was great, it was fun, I had a great time. I think these guys, they really bring the best out of me. They make me uh, super comfortable and I can just be myself without any worries. We left on a Thursday, we left Thursday morning, came back Sunday. And when I got back, oh man, I, when I got back home, it just wasn't the greatest homecoming you would want. Uh, I got back home went inside, my mom's cooking dinner or something. I go into the kitchen, I was like, hey mom, I was like, hey, the trip was great, it was so fun. Right when I was about to tell her about everything, she like started crying and I was like, oh boy, what happened now? And then she looked at me, she said, Eric, uh, Jackie died last night. 
And of course, you guys don't know who Jackie is, but uh, she's my grandmother. And so, uh, yeah, earlier in January, she unfortunately tested positive for COVID. And uh, yeah, things were just, I thought she was going to get better. We all thought she was. And then I guess Thursday when I left was when she started getting worse. My mom just didn't tell me because she wanted me to have a good time. And then, man, it sucked because I loved her so much. She meant so much to us. We were very close to her and her family. And I just, I didn't know what to do. And then that whole week was just, just me grieving and trying to understand what the heck was going on. And that Thursday, the Thursday, that same week on Thursday, my friends called me. One of them called me. It was like, hey, Eric, uh, we're going to this restaurant called Oso. You guys know what that is, Oso? Anyways, we, he was like, you want to go with us? I was like, no, nah, I'm not feeling it. He said, come on, we want to cheer you up. We know what's going on. I told him what happened. They're like, we want to, want to somewhat do something. We want to do something for you. I was like, okay. So I went. We ate at Oso. Uh, honestly, it's not that good. I didn't like it. It's, it wasn't that good. Too expensive, and the food was mediocre. Anyways, go to Oso, and then we were just walking around downtown Gilbert, just messing around. It just reminded me when we were teenagers, like in high school, like 15, 16 years old, going to the mall and just messing around. And... I was having a lot of fun, and those guys were making me laugh. And then we were sitting around. We we're just sitting around like this. We we're lay- actually we weren't sitting around. We we're just like laying on the grass. And then my friend, just like he's wearing like these Jordan slides or like slippers. So then <laughs> I get I get one of them. I toss it in the air really high. He's like, "Dude, what are you doing?" I was like, "I was like, oh, look at the hoo." And then it fell over a wall. And then. Uh, my friend was like, I'll go get it. He goes over there, jumps over the wall, gets it. And he, <laughs> he comes back with like a straight face. I was like, hey, what's wrong? Did something happen? He's like, uh, Eric, you just hit a girl. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, okay. So then I get up. I was like, I'm going to go apologize. And those three guys, hey, those three guys, they're my homies. They're my best friends. They're my brothers. But they're the most awkward people at first. Anyways. They're like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm going to go apologize. I looked over. I was like, hey, what's up? Uh, I'm sorry. That was me that threw it. Yeah, have a good day. And I walked, out, I walked away. And then those guys were just laughing at me. They're like, oh, you sound so corny. I was like, yeah, whatever. We go through our day. We get milkshakes and then go play top golf. Then I went home and then I realized something. I am so blessed to have friends like those. I'm so blessed to have a relationship with those guys. I know I said that we shouldn't want something out of, we shouldn't be able, we shouldn't have the need to receive something, but honestly, when you care about someone, that care is gonna go back to you. You're gonna need that in life. You guys are very young. Life is not always going to be, like, it's not always gonna be awesome and exciting. There's gonna be moments in your life where life's gonna be dark, there's going to be moments in your life where life's just not fun, where it's going to suck. And I must say that you guys really need those important people in your life. You guys really need to be careful of like who you surround yourselves with. That's why I said, you're going to know, you're going to learn real quick about when you care for others, who's actually with you and who's not with you. You could be caring for someone so much right now, but they just don't appreciate you. You could be caring about someone a lot right now, but they're not with you in every step with you. You need to surround yourself with people who are willing to push you, people who are willing to encourage you, people who are willing to do life with you, people who are willing to be there with you when times of tragedy hits. Guys, you're really going to need it because life isn't promised to be good every single day. It's going to suck sometimes. And for the last part of the lesson is that you will realize like what your identity, what your identity is through Christ. And if you want, you can, there you go. Find your identity through Christ. The image of God. How many of you guys have heard about that image of God? You guys raise your hand if you heard of that. All right. 
Do any of you guys want to tell me what that means to you? Do any of you guys want to tell me what the image of God means to you? Yeah, right there. What's that? Okay. Anyone else? What's up? Peace? What's up? How what? How he's expressed. That's a good way to look at it. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'll take one more. Don't be shy. We're a ministry here. No one, there's no right or wrong answer. All right. So the image of God. It can be kind of hard to grasp. It can be kind of hard to like understand. But I want you guys to know this morning is the care you show now and going forward in the future in your life will reflect the man and woman of God you are going to be. Like the man and woman of God that God designed you to be. Your life right now is gonna reflect how others are gonna view you. So I'm gonna read a verse in Genesis, uh, the first chapter of it actually. Verse 26 through 27. Now, I think that this verse, like, people just read over it and just don't really think much about it. They just read over it, and they don't really have much thought into it. So I'm going to read, uh, starting verse 26, and it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image and our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. If there's anything God wants you to know this morning, it's this. You, you guys, say you, say you, three, two, one. You are God's best creation. You are bad, God's best creation. You are his best piece of work. And God wants you to know that this morning. Because being an adult, honestly, there's adults, there's grown adults right now that don't even like show care for other people. And you look at their lives and it's just honestly sad. And it's just full of darkness and, and they're just miserable. Like, I can't imagine living a life like that. You know, like, I, I talk to some of, like, not you guys, but, like, teenagers in general, like, my little cousins and stuff. And they'll just be like, oh, I don't care about this, this, and this, and this. And honestly, it just shows, like, how spoiled we can be. Like, how much we may not appreciate our parents. I know as I got older in life, I've realized like the mistakes I made. And I must say, I wish when I was your age, I cared a lot about life like you guys did. I wish I showed that care to my mom and dad when I was your age. There were some friendships I had that were just broken off that I wish I showed more care for that person. Because now when I look at them now, they're not doing good stuff. Like, like they be getting, they be, they be getting in trouble with the law and stuff. And I just think to myself like, wow, and that one person once told me I mean a lot to him. But when it came from me to him, he didn't mean anything to me. And that made me feel like, like ungrateful and also not a good person. But then... I also want to pinpoint this to you guys. How you live your life will reflect the way others view you. I said that earlier, and I want to pinpoint that again. Because as you enter adulthood, you guys, have, you guys are going to have your own like, little reputation. Like in the workplace, like even the school you go to, you guys are going to have your own reputation. I want you guys to ask, you guys, ask yourselves this. Do you want to be known as like, Oh, the, the, the partier and the, oh yeah, this guy, this guy just shotgunned a beer. Oh yeah, this guy, uh, he did this and this and this every single weekend. Or do you want to be known as the, as the, as the person like, oh, 
this guy's so caring. Oh, this, this girl is so like joyful and so sweet. You guys gotta ask yourselves this. Do you guys wanna be known as that or this? I know in college, like I'm in college right now, when I first got to GCU, I'll be honest, I didn't really make a ton of friends. I made like a couple friends, but uh, one of them that I made, he actually lives in Texas. Uh, it was funny because he would talk to me. I, I like the guy, obviously he's my friend. Like I liked him a lot. And he would tell me all these things, like everything about his life. And I would just listen. I would just sit and listen. And I didn't really like give him feedback or anything. And I remember one day he just looked at me and he was like, uh, Eric, you are very different than like these other people. I was like, why? He's like, I'm telling you all these things. And these people usually just judge me for like what I do. But you just sit there and listen. And, you know, you don't make me feel bad for like who I am. And then I looked back at him. I was like, it's not my place to say that. I was like, I just want to be your friend. You know, I just want to hang out with you. I want to show that I actually care about you. I don't want to like be like, oh, you need to change your life right now. Like, no, that's not why I'm here. Like, I'm friends with you because like, you're a pretty cool dude and I like hanging out with you. Guys, caring for others may sound simple, but it is so hard for some people to even grasp. It is so hard for some people to even, to even just do it. And it goes so, it, it is such a huge step to becoming the person God wants you to be. It is such a huge step to when you step into adulthood. Because adulthood is so different. I mean, I'm still learning it. I'm only 20 years old. I'll be 21 literally next week. And it is such a huge step to becoming an adult. I know my parents always taught my sister and I about what it means to be an adult, what it means to like, like the responsibilities to it and your reputation and all that stuff. But honestly, like going into this, because like you guys are like 14, 15, 16, 17. It's going to be coming up real quick. And I must say, what are you going to do right now to one, care for other people and two, be the person that God designed you to be. Because I'll tell you what, if you just simply cared for one another, that's what this world needs. Can we all agree that this world needs to care for each other? This world is so broken. I mean, I was looking the other day, I feel so bad because the Asian community is really getting beaten up. Like people are literally beating them up for no reason. When this pandemic started, People were calling them racist names and stuff. Like, guys, you just need to, like, put everything, put everything down. Just love one another. Just care for one another. Because when you do that, one, a few things could happen. One, one, it says, some, it says a lot about you. It says a lot of good things about you. And two, it says, like, the person that God designed you to be. It really does. And three... It glorifies the characteristics and the character of who Jesus is. And I think that's something we all really need to do. Because I'll tell you what, my people, my Navajo people, we don't got a good history with Christians or Catholics or Mormons. Because when they came into our community, they had a Bible in one hand and a sword in the other. That didn't tell us that they cared about us. That just told us they want, us, they want to force something onto us. But really, in the end, you guys just really just need to dive deep and just love one another. Just care for one another. That's what this world needs desperately. That's what you guys need each other. And I must say, like, in, going forward, really ask yourselves what ways you can do that. What ways you guys can become just like, not just better Christians, but better people. Because that is so important. And once in a while, just when you're at school, just put the phone down, like, like her, put the phone down. <laughs> Just put the phone down and have a good conversation with someone. It's as simple as that. Because when you put the phone down, it really shows that you do care about someone. That you care about, you value them, you care about what they have to say, and you care about their presence. 
Everyone, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Let's pray this out. God, thank you for, oh, once again, just thank you for bringing these students here on this fine, beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, just right now, I just pray that these students really just express who they are, express the love that you bring them, God. Express of who Jesus is and the importance of him dying on the cross. Lord, right now, we just pray that each and every one of these students, when they leave this safe building, that they go out there and really be the difference maker of this world. Be the people that show the care in this world, because this world needs it. This world needs people to care for one another. There's too much hate, there's too much war, there's too much just bad things happening. But right now, just let these students know, no matter how old they are, how they look, who they are, where they come from, they are enough. They are worthy of doing your kingdom work. They are enough to be the leaders, the future leaders of this world. And lastly, that they are your best creation. Let them know that here on out, God. Let that be a reminder every day. We thank you so much and love you a lot. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen.